Hello everybody, so this is the second video for chapter 6 of the reinforcement learning course. So in the first part of the chapter, we introduce temporal difference learning methods which um, can uh, share some uh, features with Monte Carlo methods in that they learn from uh, experience instead of uh, relying on knowing the model or transition distributions. But and however, uh, they provided faster updates since updates occurred before the end of the episode, as soon as the next state is observable. So to be able to do uh, that, the uh, such algorithms needed to um, instead considering the the return, which considers all. Uh, rewards until the end of the episode, they had to rely on the value function estimate for the next state, which is uh, some form of expectation of up all rewards until the end of the episode, starting on the next step uh, to be able to, to update their states. Okay, so uh, we saw in the last video that the, uh, maybe we could go back a few slides here, uh, we had the following update rule. So instead of having the, this is the temporal difference update rule. So the next estimate is the previous estimate for a given state plus uh, lambda, which is the learning rate times the error, times the error. And the error is the reward plus uh, gamma times the estimated value function at the next state. So this is some form of expectation of all subsequent rewards after the next one minus the current estimate. Okay, so to, to be able to function, we needed to use the uh, estimate of the value function at the next state. We would have liked to have the true value function, but in practice, of course, it's impossible. So uh, we needed to use what we call bootstrapping, whereas the uh, true value function is replaced by an estimate of it in the target part of the error, which is this one. Okay. So let's go back to where uh, we were. So one uh, could ask, well, are these uh, TD methods sound? Okay, Do, are they theoretic, theoretically well-founded? Um, because they base uh, their updates uh, on estimates of the value function. Okay, so is that a, a, a appropriate? And the answer is yes. So if we refer to the textbook, uh, they discuss that the TD0 method, where uh, we use the estimated state value function VT and the target instead of the true value function, still uh, exhibits convergence to the true value function. Okay, so if you apply TD0, your algorithm should converge to the true value function. Okay, now you might ask yourself what type of convergence because uh, there are multiple types of uh, convergence that exist in probability. So the textbook says that uh, if alpha is sufficiently small, we have uh, some results which show convergence in mean to the true value function. Okay, so convergence in mean and probability, it has a very precise statement but the textbook remains a bit vague about uh, is if they use that definition of convergence in mean. Okay, so the textbook is a bit vague about that, and I haven't validated these uh, proofs myself. So um, here I, I I tell you to be a bit careful where, where you interpret this because to me the the result result stated in the textbook is not a hundred percent clear. However, there's another uh, result in the textbook which says that if step sizes are uh, suitably shrunk through time uh, according to some technical condition, where the technical conditions are these, uh, if you check in the second footnote, there are these uh, presented in chapter 2 where the sum uh, of all alphas must be infinite, but the sum of squared alphas must converge. Okay, so if you have that, uh, then you can show 
almost sure convergence, which is a convergence with probability one. So again, for these results, I haven't de derived them myself. I just relied to the information provided on the textbook. And the, in the textbook, they point to so, some references about this. So feel free to validate because um, when, when proofs are not provided in the textbook and results are stated, uh, you want to make sure sometimes that they're rigorously stated, so it's good to refer back to the original uh, papers. Okay, so that's good. Uh, we we just, according to comments provided in the textbook, this um, established that both temporal difference methods and Monte Carlo methods, they converge asymptotically, where asymptotically means as uh, the number of episodes presented uh, to the agent converges to infinity. So both methods converge to the true policy uh, state value function v pi. Okay, so our estimate of the value function, state value function will converge to the true one, both in uh, the TD0 algorithm and Monte Carlo uh, algorithm that we, we've discussed in the previous chapter. However, uh, one question is, if both converge, well, we would like to know which method does converge faster in practice. Okay, so um, the textbook states that there's no uh, fully satisfactory answer to, to this question yet, uh, in the sense that there's no like fundamental proof which says, well, these algorithms, they do converge faster than these one in this or this context, okay? So, um, from a theoretical standpoint, I think there are still gaps in the literature about uh, this discussion, but in practice, many people have uh, observed that temporal difference methods uh, tend to work faster uh, for in practice for many applications. And this is not surprising because as we said, the learning is faster in temporal difference approaches because uh, value functions are updated on every time step, every time a new reward is observed instead of having to wait until the end of an episode. And so now we'll, uh, we'll leave it at that, but we're also going to have a subsequent further discussion about that because uh, this involves the bias variance trade-off. Okay, so TD methods, they have smaller variance and uh, more bias. Okay, so what do we mean by that? When we consider the target, uh, the target... So maybe let's write this. Okay, so TD, the target is of the form RT plus 1 plus gamma VT ST plus 1. Okay, so for uh, Monte Carlo, the target is of the form uh, sum of our plus j gamma j minus 1 for j goes to 0 until the end of the episode. Okay, so here this target which is used for updates uh, for Monte Carlo there's no bias because the true expectation of the return is the value function. Okay, so this is a uh, a return the the definition of the value function is the expected of the return in a given state and this is the true return so when we take the expectation of this it is indeed the value function conversely above the TD method has some bias okay because this is not the true value function this is only an estimate of it okay so the expectation of this is not exactly the value function in ST but it's an approximation of it so TD methods have more bias than Monte Carlo methods, which have no bias. But in terms of variance, so which, uh, which target is more volatile? In practice, it is the Monte Carlo one, okay? Because 
For the TD1, there's uncertainty only with respect to two variables within a one-step horizon. So the next reward and the next state. And this is much less volatile than the total stream of, uh, of rewards, which in many steps could fluctuate a lot. So for this reason, the target uh, of the TD method has less variance than the Monte Carlo target in, in most applications. So because of that, TD is higher bias, lower variance. Monte Carlo is uh, lower bias, higher variance. Okay, so it's the same uh, dilemma than uh, in statistics. So when you want to estimate something, you want not only to reduce the bias, but re reduce the variance of your estimator. Well, the same thing applies here. Okay, so for problems where uh, the bias is not very uh, important, then maybe TD work better. In other problems where the variance of rewards is not super large, maybe Monte Carlo methods might converge faster. So um, I think theoretical results uh, when they are derived at some point, they might point to, towards this bias variance dilemma where uh, some problems which are at different locations in the spectrum of bias and variance have different uh, optimal algorithms to solve them. Okay. So uh, that's good. This, this is about asymptotic convergence. But now in practice, sometimes one point that must be discussed, so this um, applies in practice, is that sometimes you don't have an infinite number of episodes. Okay, So if the episodes are generated to, through Monte Carlo simulations, then of course you can, you're not limited in the number of episodes. But in practice, sometimes the episodes are generated uh, by interacting with the physical environment. So for example, you have to operate some very expensive machinery to generate the various episodes and thus you have a limited number of them because of the costs. So a common approach is to repeatedly present uh, the same experience, the same set of episodes to the algorithm until you achieve convergence. And this approach is known as batch learning. So let's say you have 100 episodes, then instead of uh, having an infinite number of episodes on which you go sequentially, you can present over and over again these 100 episodes to your TD learning. So now uh, we will discuss next what happens in that case. So, uh, again, just a quick note, this is a recall. So, for a given approximation of the value function, um, so, okay, um, how can I say that? So, the increments uh, can be computed uh, both at all time steps of uh, the the Markov decision process, they're observable only at the end. But let's say the episode finishes, then you can uh, then you can calculate on each episode the increments to the value function generated by all points. But uh, what we're gonna do here is um, we're only gonna so for Monte Carlo, of course, all increments are applied at the end of the episode because the returns are not observed uh, before that. So as we said for TD, uh, you can uh, sometimes, well, typically you can make updates at every time point, every time there's a new uh, reward that is observed. But another practice that some people do is to wait for the end of the episode and then apply in one shot, all the increments that would have been warranted uh, within the episode. Okay, so this approach where you wait for the end of the episode uh, to apply all the, the increments, uh, they call it batch learning.
Okay. So, Monte Carlo methods, as we said, they're and TD methods, they're only guaranteed to converge to uh, VPI under an infinite number of episodes. But what happens in the previous case where the number of training episodes is finite, um, we're going to see that when you do that, both methods, the TD uh, learning approach and the Monte Carlo approach, they will both have their estimates converging to some value function. But what we're going to see is that this value function differs for the two algorithms. So it's not necessarily, um, well, of course, it's not the true value function because you only have a finite number of episodes. So you can, cannot converge to it. But both algorithms, when there's only a finite set of episodes available, they'll converge to different answers for the um, for their estimates of the, uh, the value function. Okay, so this we will present uh, the difference between the two methods next. Okay, so let's present an episode to see, uh, not an episode, an example to see why both methods would converge to different value functions. Okay, so here we're going to present example 6.4 from the textbook to illustrate why the Monte Carlo approach and the TD approach converge to different um, value function estimates as the same finite number of episodes are pr repeatedly presented to the algorithm. Okay, so suppose we have in total eight episodes, uh, eight episodes that was generated from a Markov decision process uh, where uh, rewards, there's no discount factor. So the discount factor is, war, is one, rewards are not discounted, and the same policy pi was used to generate all the episodes, and we, we like to estimate v pi, the state value function of these episodes. Okay, so the episodes generated are the following. So the first episode is uh, you start in state A, then get a reward of zero, start in state B, then get a reward of zero, then the next six episodes are the same. You just start in, in state B, you get a reward of one, and then you stop. And then the last episode, you start in state B, have a reward of zero, and then this stops. Okay, so clearly B is the terminal state where the episode stops. Um, and then what we'd like to do is to estimate the value of states A and B. Okay. So what would you say would be the most suitable estimates for the values of states A and state B? So for state B, I think pretty much would agree, everybody would agree that 0.75 would be the best estimate for the value of state B. Okay, so let's go back here. So in state B, uh, you have, in all episodes, you go there. Uh, so, but in two episodes, you get a reward of zero, and in six episodes, you get a reward of one. Okay, so if you average all these, uh, the average reward in this state is 0.75. Okay, so this makes a lot of sense. So 0.75 is the most suitable, I'd say, estimate for the value of B in that case. However, for the value of state A, this might be less consensual. Okay, so the first way, okay, the first way to see this is through a Monte Carlo approach, uh, which was seen in Chapter Five, where you just average all the rewards, or sorry, not all the returns you've obtained when passing by state A. Okay, so in that case, this uh, approach would entail a, va a estimated value of zero, because if we go back here. So the only time we went through state A, uh, we got a reward of zero. So if we average all the, the returns, uh, so, sorry, not a reward of zero, but a return of zero. So all rewards were zero. So if we average across all episodes uh, where we passed through A, the returns is always 
zero. So the, we average only ac across this episode, and the return is zero here. So this would entail an estimated um, value function at a of zero. Then um, there's another way to proceed, which uh, would be a TD method, which would converge to another value for uh, a, which is 0.75%. Okay, so how does it do that? Not not percent, but 0.75. So how how what would be the rationale for that? Um, then this uh, could be seen as when you're in state a, okay you always get a reward of zero, but you're sure to transition into state B. And then the value of state B is 0.75. So if you're sure to transition to state B and in average in state B, you have 0.75, then you could estimate the value of state A by 0.75. And this is what the um, TD0 approach would do. Okay, so let's see that. So eventually as you run the TD algorithm, as we said, the estimate uh, for the state B would converge to 0.75 because this is only the, the only suitable value for that estimate based on the episodes we have. So then, if you once the value for state B is it converges to 0.75, once the estimate of the value of state B converges to 0.75, then this entails uh, running the following procedure. Okay, so the TD0 approach, it says that the next estimate of the value of state A is the previous estimate plus alpha times the error, and the error is the next reward plus uh, gamma times the value of the next state, which is B all the time, according to our episodes, minus uh, the, the current value of A. So why is it B all the time? Because among all episodes, uh, there's only one which went in state A, and in this episode, the next state is always B. So you can do that. Okay, so a quick note. For all other episodes where A wasn't present, the value of state A is not ref uh, refined. Okay, so this update rule applies only for the single episode where state A was uh, observed. So here, where, when you're in state A for this episode, the next reward was always zero. Okay, because let's see here, when we start in state A, the next reward is always zero, but the next state is always B. So here, this would become plus lambda times the value of state B. Uh, not lambda, gamma. Gamma, we said it's 1. There's uh, no discount factor in that case. And uh, VB, uh, we said that eventually it should be very close to 0.75 uh, if the, the algorithm has run for a sufficiently long amount of time minus the value of state A. Okay, so this we can rewrite uh, according to the following is the next estimate is uh, the previous estimate of state A times 1 minus alpha plus alpha times 0 0.75. Okay, so every time uh, every time you update the value of state A, you take a weighted average between 0.75 and your current estimate. So eventually this weighted average, as you uh, present it repeatedly uh, to, the, to the algorithm, this is going to converge to 0.75. Okay, so we see that the TD0 uh, method should exhibit, uh, uh, should have an estimated value of state A, which should converge to 0.75. So for Monte Carlo, state A estimate is 0. For TD methods, state A estimate is 0.75. So we see that both methods lead to different answers in that case. Okay, so... Uh, as we said, this illustrates a different general difference between the estimates found through batch learning in TD0 and uh, Monte Carlo methods. So as we said, for Monte Carlo methods, uh, the estimate of the value of all states is just the average across all episodes of returns uh, in which 
for for episodes in which you went through state S. Whereas conver uh, conversely, for the TD0 method, uh, it can be shown that the, their value function estimate will converge to uh, the value function of some Markov decision process where transition probabilities are given by the maximum likelihood estimate of transition probabilities in the batch data. Okay, so uh, instead of just averaging paths, the TD methods, it's like the, it, it's, la it's as if it's setting up its own Markov decision process where the transition probabilities are these observed in your episodes. And then if you solve that fictitious Mark uh, Markov decision process, you would obtain a solution which would be the same than your batch uh, TD0 solution. Okay, so this estimate of the value function, sometimes it's called a certainty equivalence, and this is uh, the estimate which you would obtain through dynamic programming if you assume that in your Markov decision process, transition probabilities would be exactly equal to the uh, maximum likelihood estimates, which are the transitions observed within uh, the episodes. Okay, so we'll stop there for, uh, here for today's video. Um, next time we'll discuss control. Okay, so in the current and previous video we've only discussed what happens when the policy pi is fixed and you want to estimate its value function. In the next video we'll start discussing what happens when you start uh, refining your policy to uh, attempt converging to the optimal policy. All right, so have a nice day.